In this example, we're going to take a look at this quadratic function. It appears like it's in vertex form, and we're going to go ahead and find its intercepts, so the x-intercept and the y-intercept. And uh, we'll do so algebraically first, and then at the end we'll take a look at the graph and see how we did. All right, so we'll start with the x-intercept, or x-intercepts. So remember, with a quadratic function, we could have either 0, 1, or 2. So let's see what it might be. So we know that we can find the x-intercepts by plugging in 0 for y and then solving the equation for x. So when this is written in function notation, we know we can exchange this f of x for our y, which then we're going to plug in 0 for. So 0 equals, and then we have x minus 7 quantity squared plus 1. So we can solve this. We'll start by subtracting 1 from both sides, and we'll have the negative 1 equals that perfect square business. So let's go ahead and take the square root of both sides to kind of get rid of this square. And it looks like, uh-oh, we've got a little imaginary number here, the square root of a negative number, which means there are actually no x-intercepts. Well, let's take a look at the function and maybe think about why. So we know that it's positive out front here, so we know our parabola is opening upward, and we also know that we have a shift, seven units to the right and one up. So, seven units to the right and one up, so yeah. So this, this guy is uh, never going to touch or cross that x-axis. So, indeed, no x-intercepts. So let's go ahead and find this y-intercept. So that means we're going to plug zero in for x and solve. So y equals, so 0 minus 7 squared plus 1. And 0 minus 7, well, that's negative 7. When I square that, I'll get 49 plus 1. So y equals 50. So we can write that as an ordered pair, 0, 50. And that will be the only intercept we have for this quadratic function. And we've done it algebraically here first. And so let's go ahead and finish the video by taking a look at the graph.